Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here with a book haul for you, and let's get started. Uh, first one is Book 5 in the Gone series by Michael Grant. It's entitled Fear. just came out. It's a monster of a book. Over 460 plus pages. Oh, I think that's 508 pages. Um, this is probably the second to last book. The next one's going to be entitled Light, as in you see the light and you understand everything that's happened in the series so far. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a fantastic series. It's um, about uh, a town where all the adults have suddenly disappeared, and it's sort of like a Lord of the Flies where the kids are trying to survive on what little dwindling supplies they have, and two different factions kind of fighting against each other. Book one is gone, then there's hunger, lies, plague, fear, and then again, like I said, light will be the last one. Fantastic series if you haven't picked it up. Definitely should. Then I've gotten book two in the Carrie Ryan's Force of Hand and Teeth series, entitled The Dead Tossed Waves. I've got book one and three now, so I've got the whole set, so I'll probably be starting that one pretty soon. Um, I've got Cami Garcia's and Margaret Stoll's Beautiful Chaos. That's book three in the Beautiful Creatures series, also known as the Caster Chronicles. I still need to get... Um, <coughs> there goes my dog. I still need to get the second book, so I'm going to hold off until I get all of those... Um, started. Um, then I've got book two in City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. I've got book one. Uh, I haven't started any of this series or the prequel series. Um, so I'm going to wait till I get them all, I think, before I start it. And people are just raving about this. and I'm going to wait till some of the hoopla dies in my head so I won't have any preconceived ideas about it. And then I'll get started. Um, I also picked up a couple more used books. Uh, Claudia Gray, Evernight. I'll read a little bit about this. Uh, Bianca wants to escape. She's been uprooted from her small hometown and enrolled at Evernight Academy, an eerie gothic boarding school, where the students are somehow too perfect, smart, sleek, and almost predatory. Bianca knows she doesn't fit in. Then she meets Lucas. He's not the Evernight type either, and he likes it that way. Lu Lucas ignores the rules, stands up to the snobs, and warns Bianca to be careful, even when it comes to caring about him. I couldn't stand it if they took it out on you, he tells Bianca, and eventually they would. But the connection between Bianca and Lucas can't be denied. Bianca will risk anything to be with Lucas, but dark secrets are, are fated to tear them apart and to make Bianca question everything she's ever believed. So it sounds like there's some uh, romantic tension, a creepy school, and some kind of paranormal thing going on there. Okay, so that's book one. Um, then another creepy academy, uh, Delacroix Academy, The Candidates. I love this cover. I think there's like this woman in the background, just the flames are just... Beautiful. It just glows. And I'm going to read a little bit about this one. Uh, I think her name is Doncia. That's how I pronounce it. Doncia Lewis is far from popular, and that's not just because of her average grades or less than glamorous wardrobe. In fact, Doncia's mediocrity is a calculated cover for her secret. Whenever she sees a person threatening someone she cares about, things just happen. Cars skid, structures collapse. Usually someone gets hurt, so Doncia does everything she can to avoid getting close to anyone, believing this way she can suppress her powers and keep them hidden. But when recruiters for the prestigious Delacroix Academy show up in her living room, offering her a full scholarship, Doncia's days of living under the radar may be over. Only Delacroix is a school for child geniuses and diplomats' kids, not B students, with uncontrollable telekinetic uh, tendencies. So why are they treating Doncia like she's special? Even the hottest guy on campus seems to be going out of his way to make Doncia feel welcome. And then there's this mysterious new friend, Jack, who can't stay out of trouble. He suspects something dangerous is going on at the academy and wants Dancia's help to figure out what. But Dancia isn't convinced. She hopes that maybe the recruiters know more about her gift than they're letting on. Maybe they can help her understand how to use it. But not even Dancia could have imagined what awaits her beyond the gates of Delacroix Academy. So that sounds really intriguing. Um, I read in the back that she's uh, the author, uh, Inara Scott, is currently working on the sequel, Delacroix Academy The Watchers, too. So possibly a trilogy, who knows. But it sounds really intriguing, so I picked that one up. Of course, the cover, you know, was awesome. Um, and then I've got, uh, this is kind of weird, it's got no dust jacket. Uh, the Eleventh Plague by Jeff Hirsch. Kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, YA book. I read a little bit of back of this one, too. Sometimes the only way to survive is to keep moving. America is a vast, desolate landscape left ravaged after a brutal war. Two-thirds of the population are dead from a vicious strain of influenza. People called the sickness the 11th plague. Fifteen-year-old Stephen Quinn was born after the war and only knows the life of the salvager. His family was among the few who survived and took to roaming the country in search of material to trade. 
But when Stephen's grandfather dies and his father falls into a coma after an accident, Stephen finds his way to Settler's Landing, a community that seems too good to be true. There, Stephen meets strong, defiant, mischievous Jenny, who refuses to accept things as they are. When they play a prank that goes horribly wrong, chaos erupts, and they find themselves in the midst of a battle that will change Settler's Landing and their lives forever. So, again, yeah, like I said, it's kind of maybe dystopian, post-apocalyptic, one of my favorite kind of genres, so I picked it up. It's kind of geek. Cool. Uh, then I also got, you know, it seems to be so many series I'll be reading forever, uh, book one of the Chaos Walking series, The Knife of Letting Go, Never Letting Go, sorry, by Patrick Ness. Um, I was lucky to get a pretty decent uh, hardcover used. And this one sounded pretty cool. A lot, it's it's a very unique book, uh, unique uh, writing style. It's kind of short and abrupt. There's like things crossed crossed out in here, italicized. Really, really different. I'll read a little bit about this in case you haven't heard about it. Todd Hewitt is the last boy in Prentice Town, but Prentice Town isn't like other towns. Everyone can hear everyone else's thoughts in an overwhelming, never-ending stream of noise. There's no quiet, no privacy, no room for secrets. Or is there? Just a month away from the birthday that will make him a man, Todd and his dog Manchi, whose thoughts Todd can hear too, whether he wants to or not, stumble upon an area of complete silence, which is impossible. Prentice Town has been hiding somewhere, been hiding something from him, a secret so awful that Todd and Manchi are suddenly running for their lives. But how can you flee when your pursuers can hear your every thought? And where can you run when there's nowhere to go? Um, this sounded really, really cool. Um, it's his first uh, first novel for young adults, so another another debut novel. Um, and yeah, I've heard some really good things about it. I believe that's a trilogy as well. They're all pretty huge too, so I've got some monster reads ahead. And the last book I have for you today, uh, I just picked up on a whim. I happened to see it and read a little bit about the back. Um, the cover is not necessarily something that just really grabbed me, but um, the back definitely did. So this is a certain slant of light. Uh, by uh, Laura Whitcomb, and I'll just read this little, this little back part here. This was just grabbed my attention. Someone was looking at me, a disturbing sensation, if you're dead. Though I could not feel paper between my fingers, smell ink, or taste the tip of a pencil, I could see and hear a world with all the clarity of the living. They, on the other hand, did not see me as a shadow or a floating vapor. To the quick, I was empty air, or so I thought. And apparently there's this boy, uh, it was like a romance going on. She's a ghost, and somehow he can see her. So it makes for a difficult kind of relationship. Uh, it's just sounded really interesting, a really quick read. Again, another debut novel. Uh, it's in the YA genre. Um, published by Graphia, which is a division of Houghton Mifflin. But this one actually came out in 2005, so it's been floating around for a while. I just, like I said, happened to hit upon it at a used bookshop, and it just, just grabbed my attention. So really looking forward to reading that. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be back fairly quickly with uh, probably about two other book hauls in a while, and I've got two... Um, reviews which I've just posted too so you've probably seen those already so hope you enjoy them and check back with us if you have any questions comments and what are you reading put them in the comments below I'd like to see some comments and, and just learn a bit more about my uh, subscribers and what you're all up to and what you're reading so thanks for tuning in bye bye